Welcome to Tipley Hi-Fi. We're known for delivering sound excellence. In today's video, I'll be covering the brand new Epson VHLS12000 home theatre projector. Epson has a long history dating back to Japan in 1942. In 1964, the Seiko Group developed the compact tabletop quartz clock. And in 1968, they launched the world's first mini printer from which the Epson brand was later born. In January 1989, Epson released a 3 LCD video projector, giving the world a new application for the liquid crystal silicon display. And in January 2012, Epson released the EHTW9000, uh, followed this up by four more generations of home video projectors, with the TW9400 being one of my favourites at that price range. And in October 2021, Epson released the EHLS12000, uh, we now finally get to see this projector in Australia. Priced at $8,999, this projector is well equipped and has a colourful and punchy image that can be used in either a dedicated cinema room or a family multimedia room that has some ambient light. The LS12000 uses a multi-array laser diode rated up to 20,000 hours of use. It produces 2700 ANSI lumens light output and uses three LCD panels. It has a dynamic contrast ratio of 2.5 million to 1 and supports HDR10 and HDR10+. Unlike its predecessor, the TW9400, this unit does not down-convert a native 4K signal. It uses a 1920x1080p panel with each pixel shifting in four signable locations on the screen to redraw a true 4K image. It has two HDMI inputs supporting HDCP 2.3 and can support 4K at 120 frames per second, along with an input lag times well below 20 milliseconds. The Epson utilizes a 15 element precision glass lens structure for outstanding image clarity and edge to edge uniformity. It has flexible installation with a motorized zoom focus, vertical and horizontal lens shift. It also has 10 memory presets for lens memory for those wishing to use this with a 235 to one cinemascope screen. It also supports the use of an anamorphic lens with both vertical stretch and squeeze modes, giving you 38% brighter image and 30% more pixel density. I'm now going to run through some of the um, on-screen menu features of this projector. Uh, first, we'll just cover uh, the color mode. So if I go into this setting here, you'll see that we've got five different presets. Each of these presets can be adjusted individually. So if you wanted to have um, uh, different brightness, contrast or sharpness controls, etc., uh, you can save these into any of these presets. The sharpness control um, has actually a few adjustments. Um, there's just your standard, which will overall sharpen or soften the image. Uh, but you can also do things like thin line and thick line enhancements. This is great if you, um, you know, sharpening images for things that have got scoreboards or where there's clear visible lines um, and you don't just naturally want to sort of extra sharpen them which might make them look a little bit fake. There's full white balance adjustment. In this section this is really designed for if you're going to have your projector properly calibrated by an ISF certified calibrator. Uh, we do support this as a service so if you're interested in it let us know and we can organise uh, a calibrator to improve your picture on your projector or even your TV. It also has frame interpolation. So if I go into this, you'll see that we've got off and three other settings. This is great for if you're watching um, either movie or video content, which might have sort of a jittery frame rate. Uh, this can be helpful for fast motion sports. I usually find that if I'm watching a, a movie, I prefer to have it on off, but sometimes on sports, you'll probably find that particularly the low setting could be quite a, a nice function to have. So this Epson being a laser projector, you do have an adjustment uh, for the laser light output. So if we go into this, uh, you'll notice that it's at the moment on 100%. If I bring that down, you'll notice that it'll start going down in brightness into full eco mode, which is only using 50% of the, the light uh, output of the laser. This will ultimately give you a longer uh, life of the laser, but however, it'll be much um, more dimly lit. Another useful feature is the, the gamma curve. So if I go into this menu, it actually takes a, a still image of the video that's playing. And uh, this is where you can actually go in and adjust the gamma curve. So on the right, you'll see a sort of graph that's mapping 
the, the dark to the brightest scene. And if I move that across and let's say go to the extreme of two, you'll notice that um, it's boosted the levels, but it also does wash out the image. So you've got to sort of adjust this according to the type of movie that's playing. Uh, if I go all the way to the other end, uh, the minus two section, you'll notice how much darker it is. So uh, at the moment, we'll leave that on zero, but you might from time to time come across some movies which are either uh, shot extremely bright or extremely dark. So this is a great sort of function to adjust and customize. We also have a aspect ratio setting. So uh, for most users, this is always gonna stay on auto mode. Uh, but if you are looking at using a CinemaScope screen like we do here, and you wanna use an anamorphic lens, this is where you can adjust that. So if I switch over to say anamorphic wide, which is generally used for when you've got a, a lens attached to the front of the image, you'll notice that it's um, done a vertical stretch, whereas the anamorphic lens placed in front of the projector will correct this in the geometry sense. Uh, and also the horizontal squeeze is for anamorphic lenses that are fixed and non-movable. So this will allow you to do a 16 by nine window within that CinemaScope screen. One of the really important settings on a projector for when you're watching particularly 4K movies with HDR or high dynamic range, the Epson has this setting here and it is actually uh, on the remote control as well so you can easily access it quickly. I'll go into it now and uh, there is an auto mode but you can also override this down the bottom where it says HDR 10 and 10 plus settings. If you go into this there is a, a slider and at the moment we've got it on 6. Now, some movies will be mastered at a higher nit rate, which basically means that the, the range between black to dark to uh, peak white is a lot greater. So you might encounter some movies, um, like for instance Aquaman or another movie that's uh, really troublesome is The Meg. These movies are shot much, much higher uh, than most other movies that are uh, available both on streaming or on, on disc. And this is where we can sort of adjust where the, the peak white luminance and uh, the dark uh, black level can be adjusted. So at the moment I've got it on six, which is kind of about right for, for this particular movie. Uh, you'll notice as I bring it down, you'll, you'll get a, a much brighter image, but we'll start to lose some detail, in particular the white areas, so those sort of clouds that are in the image or even the, in the water, the white caps. Uh, if I go the other way, if I go to the extreme, you'll notice it'll darken the image, but I'll now start to really make the image a bit too dull. So there's a sweet spot there. And you'll find some movies, um, you might have this on six or seven, on others you might have it closer to four, but it's a great sort of custom adjustment setting that you can do. Another useful setting that the Epson has is a feature called blanking. Now blanking is used um, typically for if you want to mask out portions of the image. So this might be the top, the bottom, the left or the right. So if I go into this setting, you'll see that we're blanking out quite a bit or masking out quite a bit of the top and the bottom. The reason I'm doing this is for a movie like uh, this Aquaman, about 90% of the movie is shot in the wider CinemaScope format. There are some scenes that go to the IMAX scenes where the image switches to 16 by nine. Now, some people might want to watch this while um, in the native ratio, but that also means that you'll be switching between black bars at the sides and at the top and the bottom. If you want to watch this in its, its full, full presentation on a scope screen, you don't want to have the aspect ratio switching, this is a great useful feature that I personally use. So I've deliberately masked out the top and the bottom for those IMAX scenes so you don't get this distracting change in aspect ratio. Some people like this, some people don't, but at least it's there as a, a, an option. Panel alignment is another useful setting. This is found in quite a few, both LCD, higher end LCD projectors and some of the LCOS projectors from Sony and JVC. Uh, what this actually does is during transportation, you'll find that the red, green and blue LCD panels can shift um, just due to freight. So you can, um, within this setting, go in and adjust either the red or the blue panel. So for instance, we're set to blue at the moment, um, and I'll go start adjustment. This will bring up a grid, which um, if you go up close to the screen, you wanna make sure that those white lines are, are white. If it, the panel's out of alignment, you'll notice either a blue or a red uh, line that's not overlapping the white line. 
So you can go in and adjust this. You can either do it for the whole entire screen or you can adjust for the four corners if there's just one section of the, the image that needs to be adjusted. Hopefully it's a setting you'll never need to adjust, but it is there just in case if your, your projector's had a little bit of a rough journey and it's slightly out of alignment. Another important feature that the Epson projector has is a feature called lens memory. So lens memory is great for users that want to do a CinemaScope screen like we're doing now, uh, but don't want the added expense of an anamorphic lens. This is where you can uh, essentially zoom the black bars uh, out of the image on a CinemaScope image and uh, save this position. So if I go into lens positions here, I can zoom it out, save it into that position, and then when I'm watching a regular 16 by nine movie, I'll zoom the image back down where you'll have black bars at either side of the image. You can also save the picture modes as well in, into this as well. So there's both an image and a lens position setting for this. Come in store to see the new Epson LS12000 video projector. Uh, stock will be extremely tight for the foreseeable future due to supply chains and the COVID pandemic. We're taking deposits for pre-orders as stock will be trickling in from August and onwards. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. See you in the next video.